Hey guys, this is MacHeads101 with our fifth Ruby programming tutorial. And in this video, we're going to be writing our first actual script, which is a Ruby program that runs without us typing things into the Ruby console. Um, so in order to be developing a script, we're going to use two programs that both come pre-installed on your computer. One of them is Terminal, which we've been using for the previous tutorials, and the other is TextEdit, which will allow us to edit our script in a pretty easy and um, straightforward manner. So in order to get to text edit in Terminal, in Finder, I'll go up to the Go menu, I'll go to the Applications folder, and then I'll scroll down and find text edit and open it up. And then if you go to Utilities, you find Terminal.app and you open that up as well. So now that I have text edit and Terminal open, I'm going to show you how to set up both of these apps in order to run a basic Ruby script, and I'll explain to you a little bit what a Ruby script does. So in text edit, the first step you need to do is change it to plain text. In order to do this, go up to the format menu, then go down to make plain text. And now, as you see, the little format bar at the top of the text edit window disappeared. So now we're editing a plain text file, and this text file is going to be our Ruby script. So let me just enter a simple line of Ruby code. Enter, or I'll just make it hello because, OK. And now let's save this as a Ruby script. In order to do this, you would hit Command S or go up to File Save, and I'm going to call it test.rb. Uh, you can technically call it .txt, but I, I suggest writing .rb there, because that's the standard file extension for Ruby code. So now I'll hit Enter, and it'll save onto my desktop. As you can see, I've got it right here. And this is our Ruby script and I'm editing it in text edit. Now let's run it in terminal. In order to run a Ruby script, right after you've opened up terminal, you have a fresh prompt and everything, you run, you run it with the Ruby command. In order to do this, just type Ruby space, drag in the script, and then hit enter in terminal. And as you can see, it says hello, and the script has hello in it, so clearly it ran the right script. But now let me get into a little detail on what just happened and how we can write more advanced scripts. So if you'll recall, if I throw up IRB and I were to type puts hello, you would see hello and then you would see a return value and then you would see a prompt and you also see the code I wrote. Well, when you run a Ruby script, you don't see the code because the code is in the script. You don't see it print out in the terminal as you can see here. You do see the output of put s, stuff like that, but you don't see the return value. So let's say I were, were to write 1 plus 2 in, an, in a script. I wouldn't see this because 3 is the return value, and I wouldn't see this. So 1 plus 2 would actually have no output. I wouldn't see anything come out in the terminal if this line were to be executed in Ruby code, in a Ruby script. So the purpose of a script is to basically make Ruby code that runs that the user can't really see unless you print something out or you get something from the console using get s. Um, and that's the purpose of a script is to write a program that interfaces with the user using put s and get s basically. So now I'll type quit and irb to get back out of that and get back to our prompt. Um, so that is basically what went on with this little put s program. Now let's recreate that script that I made in the last tutorial so long ago that will ask you to enter your name and then say hello to you. So it'll say enter name and then it'll say name equals get us dot chomp and it'll say hello name. And as you recall this will just embed the variable into the put s. This will get the name from the console and get rid of the new line and this will tell them to enter their name. Let's go ahead and save this. Now let's run it by typing Ruby space and then dragging in and hitting enter. So now it's asking me to enter my name and as you can see it just says enter your name. It doesn't say uh, name equals get s and it doesn't say put s enter name or anything like that. It just says what I put s. So I'll type Alex and it says hello Alex. So as you can see, this looks much nicer than what we got with our IRB console when we ran the same code because, you know, the user one would have had to type in the code as it went along as opposed to in the script where it's already in the file. 
and also you don't see return values cluttering stuff up, etc. So the idea with the script is that I could take this file, send it over to my friend, and he could run it in Terminal 2 using the same Ruby command, and he would see the same program. And he wouldn't actually have to know Ruby, he would just have to be able to interact with this and type his name and hit enter and whatever. Now let's go ahead and write a slightly more complex uh, script that will utilize the feature slightly more. We're going to make a program that adds two numbers together based on what the user types in. So first I'll show you what you might want to try to do and then I'll show you how to actually make it work because um, this is actually like it's a developing thought process whenever you write a program you have to think about what you're doing. So obviously the first thing we're going to need to do when writing this program is ask the user to enter two numbers. So we ask them to enter a number and we say number one equals gets.chomp let's say and then let's ask another number All right, and now we're going to need to print out the result. Now, let's go ahead and first get a variable that, will, that should have our result. So let's call it sum, and we'll make it number 1 plus number 2. Now, this won't work, and I'll explain why in a second, but let's go ahead and run it. The sum is sum. Let's save this and run it, and I'll show you what will go wrong. I'll enter a number, let's say I write 10, and then let's say I write 15. The answer should be 25 when I hit enter here, but as you'll see, it's 1,015. Now, it's not actually a number. The answer is not this, and this isn't actually a number. It just took what I entered here, and took what I entered here, and put one next to the other, and printed that out. And that's because, let's say I go back into IRB, and I type 10 in quotes, plus 15 in quotes, it appends them and you'll get 1015. Now in order to basically convert these to a number that we can add, you're going to use the 2f method, which will convert them to a floating point number um, and this will allow you to add them like you normally would. So you'll put dot 2f after one string and dot 2f after the other string and you would get 25 as a number. Now let's go ahead and essentially do this in our script. All we have to do is put dot 2f after this number and dot 2f after this um, variable. So you'll end up getting the strings which were input using get s which will always input a string and then you use the method 2f to convert them both to numbers. So you can imagine like getting input from a script you're always getting a string because Ruby doesn't know if the user is going to enter a number or a name or anything like that so it's just going to treat it as a string since a string can really contain anything but then you know that the user entered a number because the purpose of your program is to add numbers so you can basically use the method that gets a number out of a string to uh, convert them to numbers and then to add them using the normal plus operator and that's what we're doing so now let's go ahead and save this and then let's quit out of the IRB console and then let's run it using the Ruby command I'll enter number 10, I'll enter 15 and it'll say 25 so that is a pretty straightforward example of a script that you can do using pretty much all the stuff we've learned um, and how to edit and run it so in our next video we'll be covering more stuff we're going to be using scripts basically from now on and we're going to be writing scripts more complex scripts maybe even programs with multiple files involved in them but that'll come much later but anyway thanks for watching uh, stay tuned and goodbye